The discussion in this video will all surround the Pythagorean theorem. Some of this will be review and some parts will be new. Remember that in a right triangle we have two different kinds of segments, the first of which is called legs and the second of which is called the hypotenuse. The legs of a right triangle are the two pieces that form the right angle. So in our triangle XYZ, the two sides that make up the right angle are side XZ and side ZY. And these two green segments, therefore, are our legs. The hypotenuse, on the other hand, is the side opposite the right angle. So the hypotenuse of this particular right triangle is side XY. Now, you probably recall from middle school that for any right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem will always work. The Pythagorean theorem says the sum of the squares of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Or in other words, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You can determine whether or not a triangle is a right triangle by plugging the lengths of its sides into the Pythagorean theorem and seeing whether or not the lengths of its sides satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. One thing that you do need to be aware of is that in this equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, a and b represent the legs, c represents the hypotenuse. And in a trite triangle, the hypotenuse is always the longest of the three sides. So if you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to test for or determine whether a triangle is a right triangle or not, you want to make sure that when you substitute numbers in for a, b, and c, you substitute the longest side in for c, the hypotenuse. Now we want to go through and take a look at a proof for the Pythagorean theorem. How can we be sure that this really does in fact work? And there are lots of different proofs for the Pythagorean theorem, one of which we're going to investigate here in this video, and some more that you're going to investigate through your uh, work in the practice problems. For our proof here, we're going to take a, a big square and we're going to jump, uh, break it up into pieces. And we're going to break it up into pieces such that some of the pieces are made up of congruent right triangles and one of the pieces is made up of a square. So in the very beginning part of this, it says represent the area of the entire square using the formula area equals side times side. Well, the length of one side of the square is going to be a plus b. So the area of the entire square is going to be the length of the first side, a plus b, times the length of another side, a plus b. In the next part of, us, they're, part of this, they're asking us to represent the area of the square simply by adding together or combining the area of each of those five individual parts. So in other words, they want us to add the area of the green square in the middle plus the areas of each of the four separate uh, little right triangles. Well, the area of the green square in the middle is also going to be side times side, or c times c, which gives us c squared. The area of each one of those little right triangles is going to be represented or can be found using the formula area equals base times height divided by 2. So if we find the area of one of those little triangles, Again, you could do base times height divided by 2, or 1 half times base times height. The base and height in this case are going to be our A and our B. So the area of each one of those little triangles is going to be 1 half times A times B. So as far as the area of the entire square, the area of the entire square is going to be the area of the little green square in the middle, C squared plus four of those triangles whose area is one half times a times b. And at this point we both or we now have two equations, both of which are equal to a. So we can do a little bit of substitution here and set them equal to one another. So we've got a plus b times a plus b that is equal to c squared plus 4 times the half a times b. I'm going to go ahead and use distributive property on the left side. So when I use distributive property on the left side, I 
I end up with a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply on the right side. 4 times a half is 2. When I go back to my left side and I combine the middle terms, I end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared equals c squared plus 2ab. And you can probably see the problem child here, or the one that's the problem, is going to be this plus 2ab. So I'm simply going to subtract it from both sides of my equation. And subtracting that from both sides of my equation will tell me that a squared plus b squared does indeed equal c squared. So that's a nice little proof involving or using areas. All right, as always, thank you for the gift of your time and watching the video. I do want you to take a few minutes to reflect and think about what you've seen and heard and jot down what you think might be the most important ideas that you need to remember from the video. And then see if you can apply what you've learned here to do the two questions on the next page.